Kikkelsman! Thank you for your kind applause. Um, yeah, I have to say uh, that Michael really had to push me to come on stage. Uh, I only had bad news today. It started this morning already when I went to the doctor and uh, he told me that uh, I'm too fat. <laughs> I have to lose weight, obviously. Came as a shock to me. <laughs> Uh, although I should have realized when last week I went to buy new trousers in the, my local Zeeman shop <laughs> and I wanted to fit some trousers and I really didn't get into any of those uh, fitting booths anymore. You know? <laughs> so yeah, then I had a call of, uh, of the Hector Caroline. She calls me and uh, she says like, uh, Professor, Professor, uh, I, I hear you have this talk tonight in the Ritz Conference Center in Brussels. Um, and I, ho I hear, I know, I know you are this brilliant uh, speaker who can really motivate crowds. Yes. <laughs> well, we urgently need new talents at VUB. Can you please convince young people to start a PhD? Yes. <laughs> Oh, thank you so much, Professor van Bendegem. <laughs> <laughs> this is Professor Kozemans. Oh shit, wrong number. <laughs> anyway, orders are orders. So I will try to convince some of you young guys to do a PhD. You can get a life afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first thing that you need for starting a PhD is real passion for science. And it's, as you heard tonight, this can be for different fields. Eh? It can be psychology or philosophy or economy, or it can be real science. It doesn't matter. <laughs> now, no, I, I, had, <laughs> I had another reason to start a PhD, basically. Um, when you saw me entering the stage, you probably already were thinking, this guy is a lady killer. <laughs> this guy is a farting pussy magnet. <laughs> it may come as a surprise, <laughs> but it wasn't always like that. <laughs> I remember when I was in uh, my last year of uh, macro-mechanical engineering, designing such tripods, um, I, uh, all, all, my, all my fellow engineering students, they all had a girlfriend, which was uh, Tipsy Tamara, fourth year psychology. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a bit of an added value seeker, right? So I said to myself, Tamara, it's nothing for you. <laughs> what I want... Uh, is a highly educated, very cultural, high-level, intelligent blonde with big tits. Uh, so yeah, that's why I started a PhD, to impress the girls. And it worked. I finally got the girl that I wanted, yeah. And I had fun with Tamara, really. So yeah, uh, so then, uh, being a PhD student, one of the advantages is you can travel, right? Um, yeah, if you write good conference papers, you can go to places where otherwise you never get to, right? And I'm talking Chile, Australia, Limburg. <laughs> All of them. And uh, as an engineer, of course, I always try to combine this with some cultural experience, right? Like going to a museum. Or, or, or visiting a city center, or going to the Burger King, things like that. <laughs> and, and in that context, I remember we had a conference uh, in uh, Krakow, it's in Poland, right? And uh, we went to visit the local, uh, the Auschwitz uh, concentration camp. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really a horrible, shocking experience. I don't know if you ever had Polish food, but... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. 
So uh, yeah, so if you, you, you hang around long enough at the, at the VUB, you uh, can enter the Valhalla of science and become a doctor, right? And then you can work as a postdoc uh, researcher and you get other responsibilities, like setting up uh, uh, collaboration with other high-level universities. Uh, University of Oxford and in Cambridge, uh, or l'école polytechnique de Paris, <laughs> or uh, the Trump Institute for Retarded in Washington. <laughs> Lots of them. Speaking of, I even set up collaboration with the KUL. <laughs> 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 Come on, they are a bit like us, right? They do research, they have professor, they teach. <laughs> they are a bit the VEB van den Aldi. Come on. <laughs> nah, shouldn't be doing this because uh, <laughs> this goes on YouTube. <laughs> so where's the camera? Okay. <laughs> I would hereby really like to apologize <laughs> to the people from the Naldi. <laughs> yeah, so then, um, yeah, if you hang around at the VUB as a postdoc and you still cannot find a decent job, you can become a professor. <laughs> uh, it's not always fun being a professor because sometimes we have to work. And <laughs> Moreover, we have to supervise PhD students, right? <laughs> now, I always am kind to my PhD students. Um, like, for instance, last week, I bought them chocolate, uh, Zwarte Piet and Sinterklaas. Eh? Of course, paying very much attention to the color of the chocolate, in order to avoid racial discussions. <laughs> because you now, you know, it's, it's a big issue. I mean, some people think that uh, Sinterklaas is a racist thing. And I fully agree. Sinterklaas is racist. I mean, representing white Belgians as a pervert priest having interest in young children is even for me a bridge too far. <laughs> I know we have traditions in this thing, but come on. <laughs> yes. So what did I do? I bought only white chocolate. <laughs> and then I was thinking, for fuck's sake, I'm doing whites only policy here. I'm executing the program of Vlaams Belang. <laughs> right? For the foreigners here. Vlaams Belang is a party at the extreme right of the spectrum. And if you look at it, I mean, even Donald Trump looks intelligent, right? <laughs> this kind of party. <laughs> so if you don't pay attention, Franz Belang will take over the entire Sinterklaas party. <laughs> and then it's finished. Huh? With Zwarte Piet quietly sneaking into your house through the chimney. Sinterklaas will be standing at your door. <laughs> Is it Sinterklaas? Auf <laughs> And uh, Witte Piet will be Zwarte Piet again. But only the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> with leather boots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's not always easy to be a professor. Um, uh, and not funny either, but sometimes you can fire somebody. <laughs> and, uh, last, last year I had to fire uh, Kinky Kimberly. <laughs> Kinky Kimberly is a, is a, is a young, uh, as a small, uh, blonde, funny, funny student, uh, very well educated. Um, <laughs> and she was doing this PhD uh, on automated vehicles, right? Uh, entitled uh, The Self Car, uh, The Self Driving Car, The Ultimate Damage Free Solution for Women. And um, <laughs> now, the, the results were not, not really good, so I had to lay her off. So, but in order to, to soften the message a little bit, I took her to this chic restaurant. And she went berserk, right? Like, oh, Professor Kozman, oh, Professor Kozman, so nice you take me here. <laughs> See, Professor Kozman's 
Then it's at the office. Here it's just professor, right? <laughs> Kimberly, I'm afraid uh, we have to let you go. Oh, great, oh, great. To which conference are you sending me? Said, no, no. And then I explained her. She started to cry. Then I saw the restaurant bill. I started to cry. <laughs> yeah. I don't like the situation. It's it's it, it's really sad. It it fucks. Uh, I have to make my own fucking coffee now. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> no. But anyway, guys, um, I need to go. Uh, Tamara is waiting, and uh, I I promised her to buy uh, her medicines. And the liquor store is about to close. Uh, so <laughs> see you. <laughs>